Leia here from LeiaForSci.com and in this video I will show you how to name esters. An ester is a molecule that has an R group which represents your parent chain attached to an acyl or carbonyl group which is a carbon double bound to an oxygen attached to a single oxygen and then another R group represented as R prime. R prime can be the same or different from your original R. Don't confuse an ester with a molecule that has RC double bound O single bound OH, which is a carboxylic acid, or with a molecule that has an RC double bound O single bound H, which is an aldehyde, nor with an R single bound O bound to R prime, which is an ether. An ester can also be written as RCOOR or RCO2R. An ester is a carboxylic acid derivative. That means it can be formed from a carboxylic acid and therefore the name will also be related. If we look at a carboxylic acid and place it next to an alcohol, which I'm writing as HOR, if we remove the OH from the carboxyl, the H from the alcohol, and bring the two pieces together, we form our ester. Therefore, when naming an ester, you name it as if it's a carboxylic acid, which has the ending oic acid, simply replace ic acid with A-T-E. We'll start with a simple comparison. Each parent chain has two carbons where the carbonyl is the highest priority. For the first group, we have a first name of F and a last name of Ain for only single bonds. Since it's a carboxylic acid, we get the ending oic acid. Since oic acid begins in a vowel, I drop the e and ane for a final name of ethanoic acid. For my ester, I treat it the same way. However, I have to take into account the methyl group coming off of the oxygen. This becomes a prefix to the entire name, and so I simply put methyl as its own word. Since the parent has two carbons, I get a first name F. Only single bonds gives me a last name of ane, and in place of oic acid, I use the ending O8. Just like in a carboxylic acid, the number 1 is understood and does not have to be included, and since O8 starts in a vowel, I drop the E and ane for a final name of methyl ethanoate. The methyl of the ester is separate from the parent name, which is ethanoate. Let's try another example. We'll start by identifying and highlighting our parent chain, and numbering so that the carbonyl gets the lowest number. I have a total of four for a first name of Butte, only single bonds in the parent chain for a last name of Ain. My only substituent comes off of the oxygen and has two carbons for a prefix of ethyl, and the ester functional group gives me a last name of O8. I drop the E in Ain for a final name of ethyl butanoate. Your ester substituents may sometimes be abbreviated. In this case, the ME stands for methyl. You may also see ET for ethyl or PR for propyl. To name this molecule, we identify and highlight the parent chain, giving the carbonyl the lowest priority. Three carbons gives me a first name of prop. Only single bonds gives me a last name of ane. I have a methyl substituent on both the ester group and on the parent chain, and I have to name them individually. The ME substituent gives me a prefix of methyl since it is not directly attached to the parent chain, while the one carbon substituent on carbon 2 gives me the prefix of 2-methyl. Since this is an ester, I get the ending O8. In putting this name together, the ester substituent precedes the name, followed by the parent chain ordered according to the puzzle pieces, and don't forget to drop the E since O8 begins in a vowel. This gives me a final name of methyl 2 methyl propanoate. When naming your ester, be sure you mark the parent chain as the one holding the carbonyl. In these two examples, I have a 3 carbon chain and then a 2 carbon chain. However, the carbonyl groups are on opposite sides and therefore my parent chains will actually be different. For the first example, I have a 3 carbon parent chain with a 2 carbon ester substituent while in the second example, I have a 2-carbon parent chain with a 3-carbon ester substituent. In the first example, 3 carbons gives me a first name of prop, only single bonds gives me a last name of ain, an ethyl substituent on the ester gives me the prefix ethyl and the ending is O8. For the second example, I have a first name of F, a last name of ain, 
put a three carbon substituent off the ester for a prefix propyl and of course the ending O8. This gives the first molecule a final name of ethyl propanoate and the second molecule propyl ethanoate. When you have multiple functional groups, the ester typically takes highest priority. In this example, the ester is higher priority and so I number from the right for a total of six carbons and a first name of hex. Only single bonds gives me a last name of ain. ET on the ester gives me a prefix of ethyl and the ester functional group gives me a last name of O8. Since the aldehyde is a lower priority group, it gets demoted from the functional group ending in AL to a substituent with a prefix oxo. This gives me 6-oxo for a final name of ethyl 6-oxo hexanoate. When you have more than one ester in your molecule, you treat it the same way but add the prefix di. In this example, I have three carbons in my parent chain for a first name of prop, only single bonds gives me a last name of ain. Since both esters have a methyl substituent, I get the prefix dimethyl, and since I have two esters, I get the ending di O8. I don't drop the E in ain, since the D in di O8 separates the two vowels. Putting the name together, I get dimethyl propane di O8. Notice that I didn't include a number for the first or the last ester. Given that these are understood to be terminal functional groups, a parent chain with three carbons and two esters implies carbon number one and carbon three both have to contain the functional group. We'll end this section with an interesting example. Notice that the parent chain appears to be a benzene ring with a single carbon coming off of it. The carboxyl version of this molecule is benzene with a carboxylic acid substituent, which is named benzoic acid. The parent name is retained when naming the ester, giving me a parent name of benzoate. That's because I drop the ic acid and replace it with O8. The substituent coming off the ester appears to be a benzyl group as well. However, when you have just a benzene without an extra CH2, this is called a phenyl substituent which gives me a final name of phenyl benzoate. Join me in the next video where we tackle naming primary, secondary, and tertiary amines. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgosecrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgotutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash layofersci. There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.